Hi, AP Physics. In this video, we're going to look at how we interpret graphs, specifically by looking at the slope of those graphs. So uh, jumping in, if you have uh, homework packet one, page nine, problem number one, you'll see something that looks a lot like this. You see some position versus time markings and profiles, graphs of motion uh, labeled one, two, and three. And so what we want to think about is what can we learn about this? Well, um, you can certainly learn quite a bit just by, you know, looking at the slope. There's also some information in the intercept, which is worth looking at. Um, so let's start with slopes. If we look at graphs one and two, if you notice, they have the same slope. Um, and that leads us to this statement. Same slope equals same velocity. Because the slope of a position time graph, something like this, is the velocity of that object. Um, there are a few other things to look at before we can actually draw our profile. They do have the same slope, um, but you will notice that the first one stops at this time, whereas the second one goes all the way to this time. So if I were to draw those, I might say, well, here is uh, something like that, object two. Uh, I'm sorry, that's my mistake. Object one and object two keeps on going so it has a line that looks like that. Same velocity, but just for a longer time. Uh, graph three has a shallower slope, so this is slower. And so line three might look something like this. The other thing we can find from this is by looking at the intercepts. If I look at this intercept, x initial equals, I guess this is maybe, if that's zero, that's one, two, three. So this is two meters, whereas both of these have an x initial equal to zero meters. So those are the kind of things you can learn from looking at a graph like this. So let's dive a little bit deeper and tell a little bit, uh, a few stories using graphs and equations and words. So for example, if Jimmy, a hypothetical person, begins at the origin and walks steadily away in the positive direction at two meters per second, what does the position time graph of that look like? Well, um, positive direction is information, two meters per second steadily is one of those special words in physics that means the rate stays constant. Um, if you start at the origin, that's another important piece. You start here, uh, it says steadily at two meters per second. So after one second, you've gone two meters. After two, you've gone four. After three, you've gone six, something like that, right? Um, and so I have one already ready for us here, right? There's the position time graph. The next thing we might do is look at this and say, well, if we have this position time graph, what does the velocity time graph look like? We actually kind of know here because we were already told he's traveling at a steady two meters per second. But if we didn't know that, we could take the rise of this graph, which is six meters, and the run of it, which is three seconds, and say, well, um, delta x over delta t is equal to my velocity, which is equal to six meters over three seconds or two meters per second. And so that would look something like that. Um, and here we've got, oops, I'm sorry, I guess I didn't have one already set up for you, but it's a constant velocity. So what do we know then from a position time graph? What can we actually say? Well, what we can say is that the rise over the run or the slope of it is the delta x over delta t. In this case, we've got, uh, what is this? 10 meters here, 20 here, 5, 10, 15 seconds. So we've got a rise of 30 meters minus 10 meters um, minus 10 meters, there we go, over uh, a total of 10 seconds, and we've got two meters per second. It's the average velocity. But that doesn't get us everywhere. The other piece is what happens if the slope changes? And in your accelerating ball rolling down a ramp, you saw this with your position time graph. What we're really looking for is the tangent of the line in this case. What is the slope of a tiny segment of it? Um, and that's not always as easy to do. You know, sometimes we'll draw ourselves a line and say, well, that's not exactly right, and try to put it on there and say, is that the slope? And once we do, we might say, okay, I'm satisfied with that. Then I can find, you know, my um, rise and run of a segment and find my delta x and delta t and solve from there. So when it comes to acceleration, which is the next concept, the math tells us it's delta V over delta T. This is a changing velocity over time. But when you hear the word acceleration, I'll be honest, 
a lot of times we think of a lot of different things, right? People say all sorts of things, uh, increasing speed, getting faster. Uh, people say speeding up. You might think of, you know, in car terms, zero to 60. You might think of falling objects as being things that accelerate. Uh, you might look at a speedometer and think that tells you something more distance over time. You might uh, think about, you know, a rate. But when we're talking about this in physics, what we mean is this one, a changing velocity. If the velocity is changing, this is acceleration. And so that leads us to the ability to do some interesting things. If acceleration is a change in velocity, we need to know delta V, which really just means we need to know the final initial velocity from a segment and the time. And this includes three things, speeding up, kind of the obvious one, slowing down as well, and potentially changing direction. And if we're just going in one dimension, that's changing from going positive to negative or negative to positive. And this leads us to a grid. Positive direction is one direction you could go. Negative direction is a direction you could go. You could be speeding up or you could be slowing down. So I want to look at four quick cases of this. So if you start with speeding up while traveling in the positive direction, we just let this ball roll down the ramp. Well, if it rolls down, it speeds up at a constant interval. There's kind of three different ways to think about this. There's the visual, the ball moves and it's going faster and faster, more and more positive speed. Uh, velocity. We can think of it mathematically. Delta V over delta T ends at eight, starts at zero. That's a change of eight over four seconds for positive two meters per second squared. Or we can think of this graphically, right? Um, start at zero, end up at some value. That's a positive slope, which corresponds to a constant positive acceleration. So speeding up in the positive direction is positive acceleration. Our next one is what if it's slowing down while traveling in the positive direction? You think of a ball getting to a hill and it starts rolling. Well, it goes slower and slower and slower. We're still being positive, right? We've got our end of negative. Oh, we've got our end of 25, positive 25. We've got our beginning. We've got our end at positive five, a change of negative five meters per second squared. Graphically, what does that look like? Well, that looks like starting with some speed, slowing down to zero, a negative sloping line for a constant negative acceleration. Case three, slowing down in the positive direction, uh, or sorry, speeding up in the negative direction. Um, then you roll down that hill to the left. What does that look like? It looks like it gets more and more negative over time. We can do the math for a negative one meter per second squared. But what does that look like graphically? Well, that would look like starting at zero and becoming negative for a negative sloping line that is constant. So that fills in our third case, leading us to our final slowing down while going in the negative direction. So this is, you know, you're moving to the left and you hit a hill and you slow down. Notice that we get a positive acceleration here. That's because our final is negative three and our initial was negative 15. And I'll use a different color here. Look at that. There's a negative sign there. What does that do for us? Well, it gives us, uh, if we think of it graphically, we start at negative, we end at zero. That's a positive sloping line for a constant positive acceleration. Uh, there's the grid speeding up, slowing down, slowing down, speeding up and slowing down. Notice that you could have negative acceleration or positive regardless of the direction you're traveling in. So that means we need to be a little bit more careful. The slope obviously does not have only one sign. It could be either positive or negative. Um, one other thing to consider is the word deceleration, which you will still encounter, but I find it's a difficult word to use. What you really mean, I think, is slowing down. Um, and that's usually what is meant if you read that in science. If you hear deceleration and you think it means negative acceleration, be very careful because negative could be speeding up or slowing down. So to wrap up, the slope of the position time graph gives us velocity information. The slope of the velocity time graph gives us acceleration information. See you next time.